Many real-world situations like population growth, price inflation, and the decay of substances tend to approximate an exponential pattern over time. We can model these patterns with equations which sometimes help us predict what might happen in the future. In this lesson, you will learn how to find an exponential model to fit data. Let's begin with a review of the building blocks of an exponential equation. Exponential equations have a beginning value and a multiplier. When looking at a set of data, if we can figure out these two pieces, then we can write an equation to fit the data. In this example, we have some data obtained by measuring the height of a ball after it bounces. The ball is dropped from a height of 100 centimeters and bounces 18 centimeters high after the sixth bounce. Looking at the common differences, we see that the bouncing does not show a constant rate of change. Since the rate of change is not even close to being constant, a line will not fit the data very well at all. Let's take a look at a scatter plot of the data with a line graph on it. The line is not a good model because the data does not show a linear pattern. Let's look for a common ratio instead by using division. 78 divided by 100 equals 0.78, so that means 100 times 0.78 equals 78. 50 divided by 78 equals 0.64. So 78 times 0.64 equals 50. If the data shows an exponential pattern, then we can use these ratios to estimate a multiplier for our equation. Let's find the average of these ratios to estimate the common ratio. To find the average, let's add them all up and divide by how many there are. We can use this estimate as the multiplier for our equation. This multiplier says that each bounce is about 76% as high as the bounce before. Or in other words, it loses about 24% of its height each time because 1 minus 0.76 equals 0.24. Our starting value is 100. Our estimated multiplier is 0.76. And now we can write our equation. y equals 100 times 0.76 to the x power. This equation is just a rough draft. We'd better make sure it actually fits the data. To check the fit, let's use desmos.com and compare our data with our equation. Now we should adjust our window. The main problem is the y-axis. We can't see the points because they're too high. Let's change it so it goes from negative 12 to 115 so we can see all of our data. Now we can drag it to show even more. Let's click below the table and type in our equation. It fits pretty good. I think it will work just fine. The equation and the graph are both models because they both represent the bouncing ball situation.
we can use our equation to make predictions. To predict the bounce height on the tenth bounce, we just plug in 10 for x and then simplify. The model predicts that the ball will bounce 6.4 centimeters high after 10 bounces. Remember, when answering word problems, always answer with a sentence. Here's one for you to try. Write an equation to model, model the data in the table. Notice that this data is growing, so if you use a multiplier, it will need to be greater than 1. First find the ratios, then average these ratios to get your estimated multiplier. Now write an equation using the starting value and the estimated multiplier. y equals 150 times 1.5 raised to the power of x. Let's check it. After graphing the data in the equation, we see that it fits really well. It looks like we found our model. In this lesson, we fit exponential models to sets of data. Modeling is an important field of study in mathematics because it helps us better understand the world around us.